Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worry, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the, his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Today, as we've figured out, we're honoring a blue Christmas this morning. This kind of bonus service we have in this particular calendar year, we've chose a blue Christmas service. A time for us to come to this place to acknowledge our mental and emotional pain, our depression, our anxiety, our loneliness and emptiness. Christmas tends to be a, a joyful celebration time of year, but it's also a time of pain and anguish for many. Remember loved ones who are no longer with us, broken relationships that are still unmended, during the sermon, we're going to be exploring the paradox of the Christmas season. The Christmas paradox seems to define this time of year. When we ask someone, anyone, it could be the nicest person in the world that you ask this question to. When you ask someone, what do you absolutely hate about the Christmas season? Oh, you're going to get an immediate Grinch response. This is true with anyone. Again, the nicest person is going to have this response. Randomly ask anyone, just, what do you hate about Christmas? And immediately they'll go into Grinch mode. The traffic is horrible. Every store is so crowded. And the expectation out there for me to spend more money than I have. And of course, the memory of loved ones lost. Dragging out all of those Christmas decorations. And guess what we got to do next week? Put them all away. And the children, and the noise, noise, noise. They'll dance with their jing tinglers tied to their heels. They'll blow their flu flubas. The noise, noise, noise. When we ask someone what they hate about Christmas, it's amazing how quickly and oftentimes how passionately they'll rattle off that list of all the things they hate hate about Christmas. But here's where the Christmas paradox comes in. After they give you the list of everything they hate, immediately ask that same person, what do you love about Christmas? And they'll just as quickly and just as passionately rattle off an equally long list. Oh, love decorating the house, making Christmas cookies, and watching Christmas specials. We love giving gifts to those that we love. We love gathering with family and friends. We just love that warm, fuzzy feeling we get at this time of year. We love coming to church. We love going out into the world and feeding the hungry. What's amazing about these two lists is that oftentimes the exact same person who just said how much they hate dragging out all those decorations just to put them away, one minute later will say, oh, I just love decorating the tree with my family. 
Is Christmas the worst of times? Or is Christmas the best of times? But this Christmas, we have more to deal with than just our own baggage, our own problems that we're struggling with. We look around the world. We see a country and a world in turmoil. The war in Israel, Palestine is just devastating. The racism, the anti-Semitism, the Islamophobia in this country is running wild. The war in Ukraine keeps raging on. The child is squabbling from our politicians and all of our citizens. It seems that we as a world are on the verge of another world war. And then the things that are truly out of our control, the, the natural disasters that seem to be getting larger and more frequent than ever before, ice caps are melting at a faster rate than anyone imagined. It seems humanity has lost its way. Are we experiencing the worst Christmas ever? Is the world worse now than it's ever been before? Are we living in the worst of times? You might want to ask a Vietnam veteran who not only lived the atrocities of that war, but also lived through the assassinations of John F. Kennedy, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy, one after the other after the other. Are we living in the worst of times? We might want to ask one of those Jewish survivors of the Holocaust or one of the soldiers that was on the USS Arizona or one of those who stormed the beaches at Normandy. Are we living in the worst of times? We might want to ask someone who was forced to drink from another drinking fountain or whose father was lynched in front of them while a cross burned in their front yard. Are we living in the worst of times? We might want to ask one of those survivors who survived the trenches of World War I, only the battle of the Great Depression after. Are we living in the worst of times? Well, we might want to ask the brothers who fought against each other in the Civil War, or the slaves who were whipped, raped, and beaten. Are we living in the worst of times? You might want to ask the pilgrims who had to flee persecution and come to this country, risk their lives. We might want to ask the natives of this land who suffered mass genocide. Are we living in the worst of times or are we living in the best of times? Or is it that every generation that has ever existed on this planet we're living in the best of times and the worst of times at the same time. Listen closely at the poem about to be read and reflect on these words as you reflect on the entirety of your life. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the age of epic belief. It was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going directly to heaven. We were all going directly the other way. These are the words of Charles Dickens, who wrote these words in 1859. And when he wrote these words, he was writing about the events leading up to the French Revolution that began in 1789. But these words that he penned were true in 1859 when he wrote them. They were true about the events in 1789, but they were also true about 2023. And next year, these words will ring true in 2024. Around this time of year, people always seem to be hoping that next year will be a better year. For all those hoping that next year will finally be a better year, hear these words of hope. Listen up. Next year will not be a better year than this year. Yes, these are words of hope and not words of despair. 
Next year will not be any better than this year. And it's also true simultaneously that next year will not be any worse than this year. Next year will be different with unforeseen events and the way life unfolds. But the balance of life does not change from year to year. The Taoist understanding of the yin-yang is one of the wisest concepts in religion. We often don't hear a Christian preacher say that from the pulpit, but life is in continued motion. Life is continually changing. But at the same time, there's always a balance in life. There's always an equal balance of hope and despair at the same time. There's also an equal balance of good and bad, light and darkness. The balance does not change. The philosophy of the yin-yang reveals that one year is not any better or worse than the next year. The balance is always there. There's a continued flux of good and bad. Every Christmas, we experience this balance with the list that I just said, all the stuff we don't like and all the stuff we love. They're both existing simultaneously, and sometimes it's the exact same thing, decorating the house we hate and we love. Everything in this universe is in its proper place. Good and bad, light and dark, hope and despair. They all dance together with an equal balance throughout eternity. As we move forward in life, we need not ask in vain for the universe to bend to our will. As we move forward in life, we need to simply find balance in our life. Try as we may to seek good and avoid bad, the truth is, both will always be ever-present in equal amounts. We have little control over, well, almost everything. Those words we don't want to hear. We have little control over hurricanes and floods. We have little control over the realities of life and death. We have little control over the will of another person. One of the most difficult realities we humans face is to face the fact that most of life is simply out of our control. In the chaos of life, there's only one thing that any one of us truly have control and total dominion over, and that's control over ourselves. Every moment of every day is a gift from God. Every moment we wake up and we have the breath of life, it's a gift. Every moment of every day is the best of times and it's the worst of times. Events in life happen second by second, oftentimes out of our control. They just happen. We can go out into this world of ours and enjoy life and face the dangers that they also bring. Or we can stay home and stay safe and lonely. Whatever choice we make, it comes with a balance of good and bad. That balance will never change. The secret to happiness is not avoiding the bad and seeking the good. The secret to happiness is finding balance in a world that has good and bad. How will we find that balance in the balance of the great universe? There are many different paths that different people take to find this balance. As Christians, we use our faith to find balance. In the Bible, it describes often Jesus going off alone in prayer, leaving everyone and finding his alone time in prayer. Even Jesus needed to find that balance. And in the same way, we come to church try to find that balance in our life. And every Christmas, we light candles. And as we focus on the flickering flame of the candle, we're reminded that even though we often feel that we're living in darkness, 
the candles remind us that there has always been light in the darkness. There will always be light in the darkness. And right now, however dark our lives feel, there is light in the darkness. The balance is always there. The reality may be that the darkness will always be in our life to some degree. But it's also true that the darkness will always be balanced with light. The light of hope, the light of peace, the light of joy, the light of love. May the candles at Christmas remind us to stay focused on the light that shines in our darkness. Amen. And I better blow out Jesus' birthday cake. <laughs> I'm telling you, the light will refuse to go out in the darkness. There we go. And with that, as we go forward in life, we know that we're all dealing with difficulties in our life. That what, that's what brings us here today. But when we feel despair, know that there is hope. When we feel that we're in the darkness, know that there's light. And when we're alone, know that this church congregation exists to be there for you in your loneliness. Go forth knowing that God is with us always. Amen.